Why hasn't the Big Ten won an NCAA men's basketball tournament in 24 years? No championships. Why? I think I have an answer. Plus, a historic performance by Illinois. Michigan State's heating up at the right time, and the pressure's starting to build for Purdue. Everybody in action here today who hasn't played yet got it all, all over March Madness, right here. Lockdown Big Ten starts right now. You are locked on Big Ten. Your daily podcast on the Big Ten Conference. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Your team every day. Welcome to Locked On Big Ten. I'm Craig Sheeman. Coming up on 40 years as a sports talk show host and play-by-play announcer. Thank you for making us your first listen each and every day. We're free and available wherever you get your podcasts and on YouTube. It's part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. This episode is brought to you by Nissan. Are you the kind of driver that likes to push things a little further? Ever wonder what adventure could be around the next corner? Take the Nissan Rogue, Nissan Pathfinder, or Nissan Armada and go find your next big adventure. Check them all out today at NissanUSA.com. All right, lots to get to here today. We're going to look at why the Big Ten has gone a quarter of a century without a title in the NCAA tournament. Plus, Sparty and Illinois off to a great start. And we'll have our basketball picks for the remaining teams going into the weekend here. Look, we continuously watch and root for the Big Ten. Perhaps some of your friends at work or at the bar, they like to remind you, nudge you a little bit. Hey, ah, the Big Ten. Nah, they haven't won a basketball title since Michigan State did it in 2000. Yeah. And then you go, wow. It really has been a long time. And then you kind of quiet down a little bit. Quick math, 24 years, nearly a quarter of a century. Why is that, by the way? Well, I have an answer. I'm going to share that with you in a moment. I'll get around to it. But first, maybe the history isn't really that bad. After all, we've had a lot of close calls, haven't we? Back in 2002, Maryland won. Now, granted, they were in the ACC and out of the Big Ten back then. But they beat Indiana, a Big Ten team, and that was the last time the Hoosiers made a serious run. That was when Mike Davis took over Bob Knight's remaining players, and they made it to the Final Four in Atlanta. I was at that game, by the way. There was 2005 when Illinois made it to the final, but they lost to North Carolina 75-70. to That was in St. Louis. I was there as well. Been around. There was 2007 when Ohio State Lost to Billy Donovan's Florida Gators. Now, I was not at that one in Atlanta, but the Gators went back-to-back years winning the title. Nobody's done it since. It's hard. And I, although Connecticut may have a pretty strong chance at doing that this year and going back-to-back, if they can get past Auburn in my bracket, how about yours? In 2009, North Carolina beat Michigan State soundly, 89-72. to That was in Michigan State's backyard in Detroit as well. Disappointing for the Spartans. In 2013, Michigan made it to the final game, but they lost to Rick Pitino in Louisville. But the NCAA uh, took that win away from Louisville after uh, there were some recruiting violations that got discovered. So I don't know if the Big Ten can count that or, or not. They didn't quite give the win to Michigan. It's an asterisk. But if they would give it to Michigan... That, that drought would only be 11 years. That seems a lot shorter. I don't know. Just an idea. I guess nobody's doing that. Wisconsin, they made the final in 2015, but they lost to Duke 68 to 63. You may remember 63 points was a lot of points for the Badgers that day, but they needed six more. Michigan answered the bell again in 2018, but they lost to Jay Wright and Villanova. That one wasn't even particularly close, 79 to 62. No asterisks in that Michigan loss. So uh, by my math, that's seven times in the last 22 years that the Big Ten has been in the national championship game. They just didn't win it. They lost it. So they've been in the mix. But I know with Big Ten pride, you want to get over the hump and get a team in there and win a championship. It makes that multi-decades long streak look a little better if we can uh, get in there and, and win one, right? All right. At uh, at the top, I told you I had a strong theory as to why the Big Ten has not won a title in so long. So let's chop it up a little bit and let's get into it. 
I think a lot of it has to do with Big Ten officiating. Now, I know it's always fun to you know criticize officials, but hear me out on this. Big Ten officiating in the regular season, they swallow their whistles a lot, a lot in the Big Ten. You know, no blood, no foul. It's actually one of the reasons I enjoy watching Big Ten basketball so much. I, I like physical basketball. Maybe it's because I grew up in Detroit. Maybe I hearken back to the days of the bad boys Pistons where it was a little bloody in the paint. I like banging in the paint. I like physical basketball. And I also like the flow and the back and forth of a game. I, um, I don't like it when there's whistles every two seconds. And so officials that let you play and let you bang underneath the limit, I like that style of play. But if you're blowing a whistle every 10 seconds and you're shooting 30 free throws in a game, I hate that. I hate that kind of basketball. How about you? I say let them play. So then when the Big Ten gets on the national stage and they have non-Big Ten officials, the whistles start blowing. And Big Ten players get in foul trouble. And teams get out of rhythm because they can't quite do what they've been normally doing. It's hard to change the way you play basketball when you've been playing a certain way and practicing a certain way every day for four months. It's hard to switch from physical to finesse right in the middle of the game. So. That's one theory as to why the Big Ten has struggled all of these years over the last two decades. You may agree or disagree with that. One player, surprisingly, that will not get into foul trouble is Purdue's seven foot four giant center, Zach Eady. Now, you can go back and watch any number of Purdue games this year in particular, where he literally runs over people, where he backs in or fronts them, knocks people over. He didn't get called for the fouls. He's a smart player. And, you know, he's a player that can adjust to when you get to the postseason. You may be going, wait a minute, Craig. Purdue never does well in the postseason. Hear me out here. Uh, but we will watch how the officials call the game on him. Now, I went back and I checked. So, Edie, last year, when Purdue had the embarrassing one versus 16 loss to Fairleigh Dickinson, you know how many fouls Edie had? One. He adjusts. The problem was that, uh, and by the way, they were 23 and a half point favorites in that game. The problem that night was Purdue was five of 26 from three land. That's not Zach Eady. That's everybody else. How about the year before when tiny St. Peter's upset the Boilermakers zero fouls for Zach Eady in the entire game. Again, three point shooting failed the Boilermakers just five of 21 in that game. And again, Purdue is a great three point shooting team this year. Braden Smith was all Big Ten, and he can be deadly from the perimeter. And if he stays hot, they have a chance. If he goes cold, it could be another early embarrassing exit for the Purdue Boilermakers. Live by the sword, die by the sword. But for everybody else in the Big Ten, watch the officiating and watch the foul situation, and maybe, just maybe, the Big Ten can end its 24-year drought as far as winning a championship game, not just getting to the championship, not just getting to the Final Four, getting to the championship. So like your thoughts on that, I just wanted to throw the Zach Eady example in there. I know it counteracted my original argument. He's a smart player. He's a good player. He's a great player, best player in the league. But for everybody else, they got to be ready to switch things up a little more finesse and be ready to play uh, so far off to a good start for a couple of big 10 teams. We're going to look at that in just a second. Uh, in the meantime, be sure to subscribe if you don't mind. I always like to ask everybody to subscribe. We'll continue to get our numbers up. It helps us. It helps you get locked into us. You can follow Lockdown Big Ten for free wherever you get your podcast. That way you get the latest episode of this podcast as soon as it becomes available each and every day. So two Big Ten teams have already played. They're 2-0. Good start. All right? An Illinois player had a historic day. Everybody else in action today, or Michigan State of 1-2, but we got everybody else in action here today on Friday on this Friday podcast. We will look into that. That's all uh, coming up right here, so stay with us. we got a lot to talk about. Very excited about this weekend with everything going on in the Big Ten, and hopefully some teams, a lot of teams, can make a big run. All that coming up next in one minute right here on Locked On Big Ten. So this episode is brought to you by some spring cleaning champions, Manscaped. Spring cleaning includes the entire body from head to toe with Manscaped and the Manscaped's Lawnmower 
5.0. Join the 10 million men worldwide who trust Manscaped with our special offer. Go to manscaped.com and use the lockdown code locked on for 20% off and free shipping. They got a fifth generation trimmer that features two interchangeable next gen skin safe blade heads, a standard one for taking a little off the top and a new foil blade that goes smooth all over wherever you choose. Uh, if you hate making a mess, don't worry. It's waterproof shower bathtub. It comes with a compact case. You can travel with it wherever you're going and whether you're looking to craft your own signature look or clean up the neckline a little bit, there's always, uh, they always have the right tools for the job. Again, get 20% off free shipping uh, and free shipping with the code locked on. So 20% off and free shipping with the code locked on at manscaped.com. That's manscaped.com. That's 20% off and free shipping with the code locked on at manscaped.com. Nothing like a little spring cleaning. And if you want to go to some of these games, tournament games, college basketball, or any other event that needs a ticket and you're the one in charge of the ticket, take the stress off. Get with Game Time. All right, Game Time. Get this app. You can get all of your tickets to anything you want. You can browse through the Game Time app, all the upcoming events in your area, concerts, baseball games, college basketball games. It's all right there. They have last-minute tickets, flash deals, zone deals, uh, I always like the feature that you can see the view from your seat. You got a picture of it right there before you buy it. All in prices show your total upfront and game time has deals on tickets right up to the start of the event. In some cases, you know, even, even an hour afterward, maybe you live in LA like I did and you can't get to an event on time. You get the tickets at game time, take all the guesswork out of buying the tickets with game time, download the game time app, create an account and use the code locked on for $20 off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account and the redeem code is locked on L O C K E D O N for $20 off. Download game time today. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. So I want to thank everybody for making lockdown big 10. You first listen each and every day. We always appreciate you guys out there. You every dayers really help us go. Meanwhile, be sure to subscribe on YouTube, share and follow and like Lockdown Big Ten, your team every day. And don't forget to check out our website, uh, talkbigtennumber10.com. We archive everything over there and we'll group it by your favorite school or team. All right, maybe your favorite team is Illinois. Let's talk about them for just a minute. Illinois is Terrence Shannon Jr., one of the hottest players in the country right now. Scored 26 points on Thursdays, the Fighting Illini. Beat Moorhead State 85 to 69 and uh, in the first round of the NCAA tournament. And they're hard enough to beat when he's on fire like that. But uh, Marcus Domask posted the NCAA tournament's first triple double for the Fighting Illini. First one since 2019. And uh, he also helped Illinois get the win. He had 12 points, 11 rebounds, 10 assists. He was all over the game, just filling the stat sheet. It was his first career triple-double. This isn't something he does every day. So uh, that's pretty cool. Did it in the NCAA tournament. It's the 10th ever recorded triple-double in an NCAA tournament. John Morant, by the way, was the last one to do it five years ago. You know, Domask is an interesting story. He was a three-time All-Missouri Valley Conference pick in four seasons at Southern Illinois before transferring for his final season at Illinois. And he told a story about how when – Brad Underwood was recruiting him to come to Illinois for that last year of eligibility, had conversations about winning big games in March, like right now. So that's pretty cool. Next up for the Big Ten Tournament champion fighting Illini, 11 seed Duquesne, who uh, appears to be pretty tough. They improved to 25 at 11 with a surprising 71-67 win over BYU. And Illinois, you know, we talk about teams having success from the Big Ten to the NCAA tournament. They've not made it past the first weekend since it played that 2005 championship game we just talked about a few minutes ago. So uh, hopefully they can get this second win against Duquesne and get into the second weekend and get on a roll. And I don't know what's gotten into Tom Izzo and Michigan State over the years in the month of March, but something's just magical about it. We weren't even sure that the Spartans were going to make the tournament this year, but he got in for the 26th straight season. And Izzo and the Spartans won their opening game 
for the 20th time out of those 26 appearances with Thursday's 69-51 win over Mississippi State. Tyson Walker had 19 points. Jaden Akins added 15 points and seven rebounds in what was Izzo's 56 NCAA tournament win. He trails just three other coaches in that category for any coaches that got racked up wins at one school. So, and he's been at Michigan State forever, the whole time. Um, they also crashed the glass really well here, the 35-29 advantage for them in this game. But uh, you know, there's not too much uh, time here for the, the Spartans to celebrate because next up in the bracket, they got top-seeded North Carolina taking on the Tar Heels. And this game is just two hours away from where the Tar Heels play at home. So it's going to be a big Tar Heel crowd there at this next game on Saturday for Michigan State against the North Carolina Tar Heels. You know, we spent some time earlier talking on this podcast, previewing the Purdue Boilermakers game against Grambling tonight. Elsewhere, let's take a look at the other teams in action starting their NCAA tournament play. We're all very excited about every one of them. Northwestern starting to make a habit of this postseason play in the NCAA tournament. They got a tough challenge against Dusty May's Florida Atlantic team. I think that game's a toss-up. We'll have our picks in just a moment. Nebraska, they're facing a 20-win team in Texas A&M tonight. Love Fred Hoiberg's team, and I've been talking them up for a couple of months on this podcast here, and I think they have an ability, if they can get by this one, if they get by this one, I think they've got the ability to make a little bit of a run. I do. I I, I do. And they're, they're shooting with uh, Casey Tamaning, Tamanaga, uh, who's a, just a great shooter from the perimeter. Fun player to watch. If you haven't seen him, check him out. And then the Wisconsin Badgers. They got to stay up late. They get a 940 Eastern tip off tonight versus James Madison. And they're going to hope to avoid the dreaded 512 upset that seems to happen every single year. Hopefully it won't be this one for the Badgers. They found their shooting touch in the Big Ten tournament. Uh, you talk about turning it on at the last minute because they had a month-long shooting slump. They were losing a lot of basketball games, and they got red hot in the Big Ten tournament. Let's see if just a couple days off, if they can still be hot behind the arc now that they're in the NCAA tournament. We'll see. We're hoping uh, rooting for all these Big Ten teams for sure. And I want to ask you a question. Do you uh, you got a TV on in the daytime? I mean, maybe you're at work, maybe not. Maybe you got TV on the background. Maybe you're at home in the daytime. You watch some Fox Sports and ESPN all day. You know that uh, talking head sports TV stuff all day. You ever have to turn down the volume like I do because it's just too much screaming and shouting and talking over everybody? It's very annoying. Uh, make the switch to Locked On Sports today. So it's it's a free 24-7 streaming channel. It's in addition to us here at Locked On Big Ten, but it's the same family group of podcasts. And uh, this will air over there. A lot of them, they all air over there. Every half hour, they re-rack a new one there. But it's, um, it's a free 24-7 sports streaming channel program for you every day to bring you the biggest stories without the screaming. Locked On Sports Today brings you uh, can't-miss analysis, opinions, news, streaming 24-7 on YouTube, or the free Amazon Fire TV channels app. Yeah, we talk about that a lot. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. All right, we have our picks. That's what we like to do on Friday. That's coming up in a minute. We've got all the remaining, the Big Ten teams in action tonight and the schedule for Saturday already. So we'll have that coming up in just one minute right here on Locked On Big Ten. This week's March Madness Bracket Highlight is brought to you by our friends at Nissan. Each week, we are picking one team that stands out, a team that's pushed it further than the rest. And just like any of the all-new 2024 Nissan SUVs, these guys were able to take it to the next level. And I am talking about the Nebraska Cornhuskers all week. I've been jumping on them. I've been pushing them. I've been talking to you about them. And unless you're already a Husker fan and you're checking us out here on Lockdown Big Ten, maybe, maybe you haven't watched a lot of Nebraska basketball. Watch them. Very exciting. Great shooting team. Very exciting play. And uh, went undefeated at home in Big Ten play this season. And it got all sorts of momentum. You know, they say, win life, go rogue. And that's exactly what the Huskers have done this season. So take the Nissan Rogue, the Nissan Pathfinder, or the Nissan Armada, and go find your next big adventure. That is at shop. Uh, you can shop at NissanUSA.com. That's NissanUSA.com. 
All right, uh, let's take a look at our picks from the games here coming up this weekend. A couple of the books already with Michigan State and Illinois moving on to the next round. They'll play on Saturday. We'll look at those last. We've got a whole bunch of teams in action today on Friday. If you're checking, I don't know what time you check out this podcast. If you're a morning person, afternoon or evening, but uh, we'll have the tip times for you here as well. So uh, we're going to put them on screen so you can see them and get this out of the way. Pop this up. Here we go. Um, if you're on audio only, we'll describe it as best we can. So we started off uh, right away, an early game here on Friday, 12-15. First one out of the box on uh, CBS out of the East bracket. It's a 9-8 game, 9-seed Northwestern taking on the 8-seed Florida Atlantic. And you know we're big fans of Boo Booey and uh, Chris Collins and everything that they do, but they are streaky. We'll see what, what kind of streak they have here where they can uh, enter this tournament red hot or not. Florida Atlantic is very good, 25-win team. Some of the experts will tell you that they are not as good as the team that made it to the Final Four last year, but we'll see. I think this is going down to the wire. The uh, point spread is minus 3.5 for Florida Atlantic to win. They're favored the over-under at 143.5. I think that the 143 and a half is right about the number. I'm going to take Northwestern. I, I think this goes down to the wire by a bucket. Even if Florida Atlantic wins, I don't know, the three and a half. I can see this being a two point game or Northwestern wins. So uh, I'll take Northwestern on that. Texas AM and Nebraska, another eight, nine game. Nebraska, the eight seed. Texas AM, the nine seed. Nebraska is favored here at uh, minus one and a half. This game will go down to the wire. Again, I like the over under at 146 and a half. I think it's about right. I wouldn't fool around with that too much. This game is at uh, 650 Eastern time on TNT out of the South. And I do like Nebraska. I told you, if they win this one, I think they can win a couple more. I really do. I am big on them, but they got to get past this one. This will be a tough game. Texas, Texas a was a bubble team. 20 win team. So they're pretty good, but they were a bubble team. And I, I think, uh, I think Nebraska can handle them. Meanwhile, we got number one seed Purdue versus Grambling, the 160, the dreaded 116 that Purdue lost last year to Fairleigh Dickinson. Purdue is a 26 and a half point favorite. Uh, I, I would think they would go over this number at 138 and a half, 26 and a half points. So that's a lot. Uh, Purdue will win maybe by like 20. So uh, I guess take Grambling because of the points. This is a 725 tip-off, but Purdue will win this game, right? <laughs> we said this last year about Fairleigh Dickinson. I don't know. Uh, also, let's, uh, let's change the screen here and look at the remaining games. We've got uh, the 12-5 game, James Madison versus Wisconsin. Wisconsin is a five-and-a-half point favorite in this game, uh, over under at 145. I think they go past that number. I think it's a higher scoring game. If Wisconsin can hit its shots, they'll cover and they'll go over the number. If they go cold again, well, they won't win because James Madison's good and they won't hit the number. It's all about the three-point shooting with Wisconsin. Are they bringing their A game or are they going to struggle? And you may know right away watching that game. That game isn't until 940 tonight, Eastern time on CBS out of the South. Then we look to Saturday's games already. Michigan State want to know already in the tournament, but they got to take on number one seed, North Carolina, and take on the Tar Heels. Tar Heels are just three and a half point favorites. Interesting for a number one seed. Uh, the over under at 139 and a half. These are two pretty good defensive teams. I That number is right. I wouldn't mess with the over under at all. North Carolina, three and a half, huh? I do think the Tar Heels will win this game and they probably cover, and I'm sad to say uh, that will be it for the Spartans. And then finally, I've got uh, Illinois, the three seed versus uh, 11 seed Duquesne, who won their game. Illinois, a nine and a half point favorite. I think Illinois is firing on all cylinders right now. I think they win this game. I think they cover the nine and a half, and I think they hit the over uh, 148 and a half. So uh, that's a look at our picks. Going into this weekend of the NCAA tournament, very exciting time. And um, take it to the bank, right? Uh, many ways for you to interact with me. In fact, if you're watching games, flip a comment over to us here. You can uh, hit us up on uh, Twitter or X at TalkBig10. And also check out our website, TalkBig10Number10.com. Take comments there. Also, also there's uh, plenty of uh, all, every one of our, our podcasts are there. All archived by team if you want it. Uh, again, let's talk, talk big 10, number 10.com and leave comments on YouTube as well. 
Before you go, if you don't mind doing a couple things, subscribe real quick. Uh, just click it on. It's free. That's it. Um, and then uh, stick around and watch another episode of Locked On Big Ten. You can uh, subscribe and follow this podcast right now on your favorite podcast app, and you'll get the latest episode of Locked On Big Ten as soon as it becomes available each and every day. And then after you watch a couple of Locked On Big Ten podcasts, don't forget our friends at Locked On Sports Today here for you 24-7 also on YouTube. Enjoy the weekend. Enjoy the games. Good luck to all the Big Ten teams. We're rooting for you. And uh, we'll be back on Monday to talk about all of them. Tell all your friends about us here, all, especially if you have friends that are our Big Ten alum. Let them know about us. Word of mouth is fantastic. All right. Have a great weekend for Locked On Big Ten. I'm Craig Scheman.